So this will be a discussion of number two from the 2023 AP Calc BC exam. And this question involves parametric equations. So they say on the interval zero to pi, we got a particle moving along a curve. Position at time t is given by x of t, y of t. So both x and y depend on t. They don't tell us what x of t is, but they do tell us that y of t is 2 sine of t. They do give us the value of the derivative of x with respect to t, or not the value, but the expression for it. Time 0, the particle is at the ordered pair 1, comma 0. Part A says find the acceleration vector of the particle at time 1. Show the setup for your calculations. So this is a calculator question. So as far as showing the setup goes, uh, you're going to need to show that you know that the acceleration vector would be for the x component, the second derivative of x with respect to t, and the second derivative of y with respect to t. Now the calculator is in play, so you can use the calculator's capability of producing this numerical value for the derivative of this for you, and the x component for acceleration should end up being what you see here. Uh, the y component for acceleration, this derivative was pretty standard, so I just went ahead and took two derivatives and then evaluated this at time one and got that for the y component of acceleration. Part B says for the interval zero to pi, find the first time when the speed of the particle is 1.5. Show the work that leads to your answer. So when you deal with parametric equations, the speed is going to be the magnitude of the velocity vector. Uh, and that's going to be a Pythagorean theorem style calculation uh, with dx dt, that would be the x component of velocity, and dy dt being applied as the legs of your triangle. Uh, and y, dy dt would be the y component of velocity. So when you set up your speed for this specific situation, you have the x component of velocity given to you, so you would have to square that, and then you would have to add on the y component of velocity, and back in part A, we found the y component of velocity right here. Uh, we would have to square that under a root. Now to find when the speed is 1.5, we would obviously have to set our speed calculation equal to 1.5. Now the calculator is in play, so you see I've already graphed this. I graphed the speed function. So this is the graph of that square root function that you see on the right side of this equation. And then I graphed y equals 1.5. And I found the first time when the speed function hits 1.5, which occurs at this time. And all that work was done on the calculator. In part C, I want to find the slope of the tangent line to the path of the particle at time 1. So the first task is slope of the tangent line. And in parametric form, slope of the tangent line is going to be determined by dy dt divided by dx dt. And we have to evaluate those both at time one. So we're showing the, the calculation that we're doing. We're doing the calculation actually on the calculator. So that's where I got this answer from. And then it also asks us to find the x-coordinate of the position of the particle at time one. So they tell us the x-coordinate at time zero is one. So x of one is going to be the x-coordinate at time 0, which is 1, plus how much the x-coordinate changes by from the time that we know it to the time that we want it by integrating the rate of change of the x-coordinate of the particle. So that's an integral that you can do on the calculator. And if you do that successfully, you should end up with a value here. And as always, with these calculator FRQs, you definitely need to make sure that your final answer is accurate to that third digit past the decimal. I go with the rounding to the third digit past the decimal. You can also truncate to, at the third digit and cut off from the fourth digit on. Either of those is fine for your final answer. And then the last part here, find the total distance traveled by the particle on the interval from 0 to pi. Show the setup for your calculation. When an object is moving in one dimension, back and forth on a line, you would do the integral of the absolute value of velocity, which is speed, to get total distance traveled. Same sort of thing here. This is our speed function from a couple parts of the problem ago. I'm going to integrate speed from the 
from zero to pi to figure out the total distance the object travels across that interval. You would also recognize this as the curve length formula. So either of those is, is definitely fine to, to think about in order to set up the right integral. Integral is done once again on the calculator. So be careful with that calculator input, round to the third digit past the decimal, and you should be in good shape with parametric problems like the one that we've discussed here.